Okay, uh, we're doing some more radical equations from 8.12. Uh, let's look at number 24. Remember to have your notes handy as far as the steps to take. Uh, number 24, I picked it because it's nice and complicated. Looks complicated anyway. So it's 5 over the square root of 3x plus 2 equals 3x plus 2, square root of 3x plus 2, plus the square root of 3x minus 1. Now, I need to just write my number 24 somewhere else because I'm about to have to multiply both sides of my equation. Okay, so hopefully you are very comfortable with the algebra side of all this, which is dealing with equations and solving for x and that kind of thing. Uh, if you're not, uh, just remember that when you need to multiply one side of the equation by something, in, in my case, I'm multiplying it by square root of 3x plus 2 because I want it to cancel with that bottom number. Radicals cannot be on the bottom. That's what you first look at and you say, there's a radical on the bottom. I've got to take care of this. So you multiply one side by square root of 3x plus 2 over 1, and you multiply the other side. If you just multiply one side, you would change that equation and you would throw it off balance, basically. Um, and if you're thinking, I, I know I can see getting confused on this, where say you had a pro, um, just a fraction, one half, and, um, and I told you to give it a denominator of six. Well, I've stressed that you really don't change your fraction when you multiply it by three over three or some, the same thing over the same thing, because that's just saying one, three can go into three one time. So if you multiply that one half by three over three, you're just going to get three over six, which is the same thing as one half. You still have that circle. You still have that, say, half piece of pie. But now you've sliced it into six slices. And uh, that might not be six equal slices it's supposed to be. Um, now you've sliced it six ways, and you're giving someone three pieces, as opposed to slicing it two ways, giving them one. It's the same amount, same fraction. Now. This side, obviously this is not equal to 1. Square root of 3x plus 2 over the number 1. That's, we're actually multiplying this side by a number and we're making it bigger or you know smaller, whatever. Whatever you decide to multiply it by, it is going to change this side, but you multiply it by the same thing, you change this side the same way. That's equations. This is kind of dealing with expressions where you can, or whatever you need, for whatever reason you need to get a problem to have a denominator and you don't want to change it, you multiply by 1. This is for equations. Okay, hopefully that is clear. Okay, these two will cancel. That's why I chose that number in the first place. And you got 5 equals, now we're going to do FOIL. We're going to multiply this to this one. So we'll have square root of 3x plus 2 times the square root of 3x plus 2. Hopefully you already know what that will be times square root of 3x minus 1, and then that square root of 3x plus 2 to that one also. All right, so let's do our math. Square root of something times the same square root of something makes just the something. Free from the radical, so we got 3x plus 2. Plus, I'm just going to write these two under the same radical. They've got the same order, same everything. So I'm going to write 3x minus 1 in parentheses times parentheses 3x plus 2. Now just foil it out and do your work. Um, let's continue to carry down your other part of the problem or may, may cause you trouble if you don't. <laughs> okay, so we got 3x times 3x, that's 9x squared. Oh, other side of the parentheses. 3x uh, times 2 is 6x plus 6x. Negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x. Negative 1 times positive 2 is negative 2. So all of these are under your radical. Let me go ahead and simplify that just a tad more. 9x squared plus 3x minus 2. Now that's as simple as it can get right now. Uh, my other bits of the problem, here they are. Now, we have a radical. We have some regular numbers. If you remember back at when I spoke about telling you about writing your rules down. Go back and look at these if you've forgotten anything. We isolate radical terms, most complex first. Raise both sides 
to free the radical and then solve. In this problem, well, I worked on getting my radical out of the bottom first. And in, in doing that, I actually freed up a radical right there and got myself just a, a free 3x. Now I have another radical to free up. How do we do that? We isolate them and then we square both sides or cube or whatever root you need at the time. This one will need a square to get it free. So let's get all of our regular numbers on one side. I was just changing sides, changing signs. Positive 3 turns to negative 3x. 2 turns to negative 2 equals square root of 9x squared plus 3x minus 2. Now we're going to square both sides. And we are going to get 9x squared plus 3x minus 2 on this side. And on this side, well, let me go ahead and simplify that down a bit so I don't have to multiply three things. 5 minus 2 is just 3. 3 minus 3x. That will be a lot easier to square. Okay, let's foil, let's, oops, let's foil that real quick. 3 minus 3x times 3 minus 3x. That'll be 9 minus 9x minus 9x plus 9x squared. So now carry down your other half of the problem, 9x squared plus 3x minus 2. Now what is our step to be working on? Turn back to your rules. Isolate radical terms, most complex first. Raise both sides to free the radical. So we've raised both sides to free the radical. Now we just solve with good old algebra. So first of all, you've got some x's, you got some x squareds. Good thing is these x squareds, there's a 9x squared on this side and another 9x squared on that side. So if you changed sides with either one, I'll just do it with this one. And you uh, minus him from both sides, you just get zero. So the x squareds are out of the game. Now we can focus on x's. 9 minus 18x, I combined those two 9's, equals 3x minus 2. Okay, hopefully that is in focus. Okay. Alright, so now we've, we're going to take our, I'm just going to take my 9 and put it on that side. This is the algebra part. Okay, so I've got negative 3x minus 18x equals negative 2 minus 9. So that's a negative 11. What's 3 and 18? It's That'll be negative 21x. Now I just need to solve for x. So simple. Divide both sides by the same thing. What same thing will help me out with this problem? Negative 21. So that negative 21 will cancel over the other. You'll just have x equals a negative over a negative that those negatives will cancel out those and you'll just be left with 11 over 21 that's your answer so the last step that we wrote down in our rules was check for extraneous I wrote solutions roots um, you can look up the uh, or roots that's what's in the uh, glossary is extraneous roots so an answer to the equation that our solution that you found that does not truly fit back into it would be extraneous. So I know this is a really long problem to check your root, but we're going to do it just for the sake of this um, teaching. And it would be wise to go ahead and check for it, um, especially if you're on a test or something. And you really want to make sure you get it right. Three. So any place I see an x, I'm going to put what I found x to be, 11 over 21. 3 times 11 over 21 plus 2 under there equals the square root of 3x plus 2 plus square root of 3, 11 over 21 minus 1. Go back and put the 11 over 21 in this one. Okay, cool thing is the three is going to cancel with that and help us out a little bit. Alright, so now let's go through there and do that. Three can go to three one time, it can go to 21 seven times. Now I just got 11 over seven. Same thing here. Okay, so that'll simplify a little bit. Alright, five over 
the square root of, now multiply, so 3 has been reduced to 1, so 11 over 7 plus 2 equals, and that was square root, square root of 11 over 7 plus 2 plus square root of 11 over 7 minus 1. So let's go ahead and multiply top and bottom by 7 over 7. We're not changing our 2, we just want to be able to add it to the 11. Actually first, you know what I may do before I try to fiddle with that, is multiply top and bottom by the radical. I'm sorry, not top and bottom, either side by the radical, like I was saying earlier. 11 over 7 plus 2 under square root. That side, 11 over 7 plus 2 under the square root on this side. So this side it will cancel. You'll be left with 5 equals square root of 11 over 7 plus 2 times, we're uh, um, distributing this one to both terms, times the square root of 11 over 7 plus 2 again, ah, plus the square root of 11 over 7 minus 1 times the square root of 11 over 7 plus 2. So we got 11 over 7 plus 2 being multiplied to both of those terms. This one will come out to just 11 over 7 plus 2 because there were two of the same square root being multiplied. Plus, just put these under the same root and go ahead and boil it on out. 11 over 7 minus 1 times 11 over 7 plus 2. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and bring all of this to one side. 5 minus 11 over 7 minus 2 equals. Okay, let's do this boiling. 11 times 11 is 120. 7 times 7 is 49. We'll, oh, watch out. I started thinking in terms of algebra. I'm just doing this problem to check my work. So really I want everything to stay on the same side of the equal sign without changing it to see if all this really does equal 5. That's, that's really what I'm doing. And multiplying top and bottom really wouldn't change that from what I can see. So I'm going to leave that part of my work. Um, and still check it. 5 equals 11 over 7 plus 2. I'll call it 14 over 7 and I can go ahead and combine them. Alright, plus square root of 11 times 11 is 121 over 49 plus 11 over 7 times 2 is 22 over 7 minus 11 over 7 minus 2. Okay, let's add what we can of that. So 5 equals 14 and 11 is 25 over 7. Let's add what we can under this square root. See what we come up with. 121 over 49. Plus 22 is okay. I know I can take care of the 22 over 7. I'll go ahead and change that 2 to a 14 over 7. So 5 equals 25 over 7 plus 21. square root of 121 over 49. You know what? Let's combine these and then I'm just going to give everything that denominator of 49. As daunting as that sounds. It sounds daunting to me. All right. 14 and 11, that negative 14 and positive 11, that'll come to 11, 12, 13, 14, negative 3 over 7. Now I'm just going to multiply 7 top, 7 bottom. Didn't change it, just making it uh, sliced up differently. Okay, now I'm going to have 121, okay, not 211. 1, 2, 1 over 49 minus 3 times 7 is 21 over 49. Is this cool or what? Look at how this is going to come out. It's going to come out just peachy. Now, on the inside, 121 
minus 21, since they're both over 49, we're just focusing on the numerators. That makes 100 over 49. Look at that with your square root detectors on, perfect square detectors on, and you can see that's going to be square root of 100 is 10, square root of 49 is 7, 5 equals 25 over 7 plus 10 over 7. Okay, keep going. 5 equals 25 plus 10 is 35 over 7. This is, remember, this whole page we've devoted to checking our work to make sure our root was not extraneous, our root, our answer that we found. We found that x equaled 11 over 21. So we took that and we put 11 over 21 anywhere we saw an x. We've come down to the last step of our problem. Does 5 equal 35 over 7? Yes, it does. 35 divided by 7 is just 5. So your answer <clears throat> is indeed x equals 11 over 21 because this was a true equation. Whew, good work.